evening, everybody. Please observe the Christmas background. Yes, we have decided that we are entering Christmas mode, um, which we will continue all the way through um, the rest of November and on through December um, until um, after Hogmanay. So this is the background that you will see for the next uh, few weeks. Uh, to get everybody in that mood, you know, we've got the Christmas songwriting challenge on the go uh, So I figured yeah, why not just get everybody in that zone um, and uh, From next week the uh, theme tune for the show will also change um, from uh, what we've got currently uh, And that'll be both both shows it will change um, so you'll find that out on uh, Sunday what that's going to be uh, Should be pretty cool um, But other than that here we are Can you believe that we are at Thanksgiving 2023 already? Uh, this year has flown by quite Quite amazingly <laughs> flown by actually seems like hardly yesterday that we were sitting in this exact Chair, well, not this exact chair because we've only had this one for a f um, just under a year, but um, You know sat in this exact same space this time last year and it was Thanksgiving so <laughs> It's gone so fast. It's crazy. But anyway, I hope everybody is doing well I'm aware that it is Thanksgiving um, as of tomorrow um, For the whole weekend um, you guys get a nice four-day weekend you lucky lucky bastards uh, we don't we have to keep going uh, through until the until uh, the end of Friday, but still That's okay. We'll keep we'll keep the world going whilst you guys are enjoying your turkey and everything else So um, please do have a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, enjoy your time with your family and your with your friends and Please do make it a good one and you can tell me all about it when uh, when we're back so there will be a show on Sunday um, albeit I'm not expecting a lot of people to be there, um, but yes, there will be a show on Sunday So if we have a few people gathered and uh, There are a few questions then certainly we will do that, but um, Both uh, this show and Sunday show might be a wee bit curtailed if there's not very many people here We might just keep it a little bit shorter um, But I will basically go with the flow. I will go with who is there and you know uh, we'll, we'll take it as it is. We'll take it as it comes But anyway uh, Welcome everybody. Um, I'm glad to see everybody here um, But yes, a lot of you folks are gonna be um, off on your merry travels um, If you're not already on your merry travels to various um, parts of the United States um, To catch up with family and friends for Thanksgiving. So uh, please be safe Please be careful, um, especially if you're driving. Um, don't be watching the show. By all means, be listening to it on audio only, but uh, don't be watching the show if you're driving a car or a van or anything like that. Um, but anyway, um, let's see. Um, Billy Morgan has regained his um, first through the door status, um, being that he was first in the hoose. Uh, which is great, and for some reason we don't have timestamps. Did I turn those off? I did turn those off, and I also turned off that as well. Anyway, I don't know why that happened, but yes, Billy was first in the door, followed by Christina, who I believe um, has kind of popped in just to say hello and has uh, and has gone again. So um, hopefully Christina will catch the replay. I hope you do. And we got John Lake at number three, which is pretty cool. John does not normally get number three spot, so well done to you. And we got Chris Monrachna, who says, "I know this is uh, just an American holiday, but you're all welcome to come to my humble home to join in all of the love and festive food and drink. Wish you could be here." Well, you know what? That is a wonderful, kind, and generous offer, and I'm sure. Certainly coming from Scotland um, If the Atlantic at the moment wasn't so rough I would certainly get the kayak out and start rowing to get across the pond But it's pretty dangerous trying to cross the Atlantic right there now and uh, Flights are very expensive, but otherwise yes consider me there at your place in spirit Chris absolutely 
He says, I might even get to spend some quality time in my studio this weekend. Well, I hope you do. And I hope you get to make some music. And um, I hope you get to make some music towards the Christmas song challenge as well. That'd be awesome. We got John Hawk here. And we got Kyle Trudusiak. We got Garden 99. We got Keith from Radio Top Frumpet. We got Don Oliver. We got Bobby Booth. We've got Kevin from Kevin's Guitar Stories. We've got Danny Taylor. We got Juan Ignacio Weissman, and who else do we have? Let's see. We got Rich Cresswell, and we got just Bob, who is just stopping in to stay around. He says, sorry I can't stick around. Super busy trying to get everything tidied up, heading out to visit family. There you go. Um, safe journey there, Bob. Uh, Juan says, we do not celebrate Thanksgiving here, but salute to you. Yes, we don't celebrate it here in Scotland either. Um, but, you know, I have... Obviously, I work for an American company, um, which is Personas, and, uh, uh, you know, I have a lot of family in the United States as well who do celebrate Thanksgiving. So, you know, I'm, I'm, it's something that I, I kind of tip my hat to and give a nod in the general direction of Thanksgiving, even though we don't directly celebrate it here. Um, but yes. Uh, let's see, Bobby says he'll be staying home. You know what, sometimes that's maybe not a bad idea at all. And we've got Elusive1970 who says, what books would you recommend for a deep dive into composition? We will get to your question in just a moment, my friend. Thank you. Uh, John Hawk says, the video yesterday was interesting. Yes, um, please do check out Rich's video that you posted. Uh, Juan says, you have a place in Argentina? I would love to visit Argentina. Um, I love Argentine folk music, um, which might come as a surprise to some of you, because, you know, you might see me as, as a jazz guy, which I am. I am a jazz guy, but um, I, I have quite an eclectic, um, you know, taste in music as well. You know, jazz being the primary core of who I am, but, you know, there's other musics that I listen to and that I enjoy, and Argentine folk music is one of those followed closely by Brazilian music. I love Latin American and Brazilian music very, very much. Um, and um, Caribbean traditional music, not necessarily reggae, but certainly soca and things like that. I love soca music, um, uh, having played in a steel band um, at one time, not actually playing the dr steel drums, but playing drum set for a steel band. Uh, and it's, it's great music, I love playing it. Uh, so yeah, so I have quite a broad eclectic um, mix of music that I enjoy listening to and sometimes even playing when I when I get the chance to. Um, so yes, Argentina, I would love to go visit. Um, let's see. Uh, Billy says it's dangerous going to Walmart these days. Uh, yes, it you know certain events that have been taking place. Um, there are a few places where you probably need to have um, um, a good amount of. Uh, let's just say armory, um, armor, body armor to go to, and maybe the shops might be one of those, which I think is possibly the most bizarre thought to ever have, that, you know. But anyway, this show is not about politics or anything like that, but yes. Um, let's see. Uh, there you go. And, uh, yes, Rich Cresswell's video highlights, um, Personas Exchange and the cool things that you can get there, the cool things that you can do there. And, uh, Exchange is actually fantastic, especially since we revamped it. It was kind of something that, that we just kind of let kind of collect cobwebs and dust a wee bit. But then, you know, um, with the launches of Studio One 5 in 2020, we started thinking more about um, what eventually became Persona Sphere. And so kind of as part of that, we gave um, Exchange a bit of a facelift and a clean out and a revamp. And I'm fairly confident that we're not finished with Exchange yet. So um, keep an eye on Exchange and go take a look at what's there now. Um, and it might give you a wee flavor of what is going to be possible going forward in the future, because it's pretty exciting what the possibilities are. Um, let's see. Uh, Danny Taylor says, okay, the Thanksgiving tradition is not in Scotland, but always a good time to eat turkey and tell, tell God and people that you're thankful. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my general disposition is one of Thanksgiving just as a daily thing that I do. I always give thanks to God for 
my friends, my family, uh, and the fact that I'm alive because, you know, uh, I have health conditions that, 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 um, are somewhat complicated to explain. And really, I don't like to go into my private life or my health that much unless it directly affects this show or this channel or things that I do. Um, but, um, I do have health conditions that do mean that, you know, uh, I could very seriously become very seriously unwell very, very quickly, and it could be the end very suddenly. So uh, I live with those kind of things. Um, so yes, I, I give thanks to God for every single day that, that I wake up, because that on itself is a blessing, because I don't necessarily expect to every time, um, because of some of the things I've gone through. So uh, yeah. Uh, and of course, turkey is delicious. So let's just face facts. Uh, turkey is absolutely a delicious meat to eat, um, especially when con combined with, you know, perfectly cooked roast potatoes that are nice and crispy uh, on the outside, but the inside is nice and fluffy as well. Perfect with perfect uh, gravy made from the, the turkey stock as well. Uh, you, you can't get better than that. And that is what I'm looking forward to for Christmas. I know you guys get it twice. You get it on Thanksgiving and you also get it on Christmas. But but hey, you know, uh, we also celebrate Hanukkah here as well in this household. So we, we celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. So it's double bubble for us as well as it is for you guys in the United States. So um, you get a lot of good things there. Uh... Let's see. I think I've reached the bottom of the chat. So I'm going to go find that question again. Um, Elusive1970, he says, what books would you recommend for a deep dive into composition? There are a whole bunch of books. There are some incredible books. Um that you can that you can get it depends upon what level you are going in to composing at if you're going in from the ground up from the start i don't necessarily recommend books to learn if you know you're you're kind of brand new to it you've never really composed anything i don't recommend um books to learn there are tutorial videos that that are on youtube that teach composition from scratch. Um, but the, the best way to learn how to compose is when you start talking about composing, I'm just going to sit with a blank sheet of paper and I'm just going to write something or an op a blank open song in Studio One or a blank score in Notion, right? It's too abstract. You don't know where to start especially if you've never done it before. You have no idea where to start. And actually, I've been doing this for, you know, pretty much 40 years. And sometimes I sit down and I don't know where to start. So what do you do? How do you get past that moment? How do you find your first note of melody or your first chord? Well, there are well-established kind of uh, sets of chord changes that are popular and well used. And so you can, you would do well to kind of start with those and then go from there. So there are things that you can do. You can take some standard chords like, um, like uh, chord three to chord six to chord two to chord five to chord one, which sounds a bit like this in the key of C major. So I'll bring the mic over. So chord three is E minor. To chord one. So we went E minor, chord three, A minor, chord six, D minor, chord two, G7, chord five to one. Now, you'll notice that I'm doing something as I'm playing these chords. I'm emphasizing the top note. Why am I emphasizing the top note? Because this is where 
melody can begin. Listen to this to the top note. All right. So listen to how that that line descended from And then we kind of held it. And then we go back round again. And then we hold it again at the end, right? So, we've got this little descending figure. Of just three notes, right? What can we do with that? How can we dress that up while still keeping the same chord changes? This is where you can start to develop an idea. We've got this top line here. So what can we do? We can play next door notes and these are called passing notes. You see what I did there? I was using next door notes. And so by using next door notes, you are able to start building a melody. And the cool thing is, you can then develop that idea a little further by introducing now that you've got some next door notes, you can start introducing some leaps. or some scale like um, descending and ascending lines as well. But you can certainly do some leaps. And that is how you can start developing a melody. You've got a set of chord changes. You've got a, um, a melody that you've derived from just the top note of the chord. Now, how can we take that the next step whilst keeping these same chord changes going? Counter melody. How do we do that? Well, let's say we've got that little thing going on at the top here that's, that is basically based on the top note of the chord you can have a counter melody that starts with the middle note of the chord, right? So if the middle note of the chord here is going to be going like this. Uh, let's see. Uh, hang on, how did I voice that E minor chord? So it's basically going to go... And there's that tension note with the seventh. And then you can go back round. Uh, yeah. And already you've got a second melody that you've just developed just by doing those little uh, next door note passing notes. And before you know it, you've got a main melody up the top. You've got a second melody, a counter melody underneath in the middle. And if you really want to go nuts, you can then develop a note, a melody that's based on the lowest note. And now you would have three notes. What do we call that? We call that counterpoint. And a lot of music from the period before Mozart, so we're talking about the, the, the music of J.S. Bach and, uh, you know, kind of a little bit earlier than him, but kind of around that period, uh, which is called the Baroque period. So in the Baroque period and the late medieval period, 
you had this kind of contrapuntal idea where you have different melodies weaving in and out of each other. And this is how you can develop a simple composition based on just those sets of chords developing a melody from the, the top, the middle, and the lower part of the chord. And then you can change the chord changes to provide a contrast, um, a contrasting section. So you could repeat that section as many times as you want. And then you could go on to another section that has a different set of chord changes that are related. And you just basically use the same methodology again. And then you go back to your original ideas. So you basically have an A section, a B section that contrasts, and then you bring back your A section, and then you finish on the home chord, which is in the key of C major is going to be C, right? And there you have a very simple method for creating a piece of music with next to no work. You don't have to sit down and think, how am I going to do this? How do I compose? What do I need to do? You can you can base it out of that. That is definitely one method, and I've actually used that before, uh, and I've certainly taught that method to students of all ages and abilities. So high school students, as well as on up to graduate and postgraduate level, I've used that methodology for teaching composing. Another one is where you do call and response or question and answer. You develop one phrase that goes up. And then you answer it with a phrase that goes down. And then maybe you repeat that. So you go up, down, same phrase, up, same phrase, down. New phrase going up, new phrase going down. Repeat that. New phrase go, uh, going up, new phrase going down. And then you um, either bring back your other idea, your first phrase, your first idea. You bring that back. And then you do yet another idea. And maybe this time instead of going up, which is what the listener is going to expect, you go down. So maybe you go da 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 da, and then the answering phrase goes da 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 da, and then you do da 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 da, -da and then you bring back your original idea. So your original idea just keeps coming back around with new ideas kind of interchanging it. And we call that rondo mode, uh, not rondo mode, rondo form, because it's basically this, this one idea that keeps coming around. It's like A, B, A, C, A, D, A and so on and so forth. Um, and so this one section just keeps coming round and round and round. Um, and eventually the, list, the listener, having heard it maybe two times, three times, the, your audience will be in a position where they start to sing it whilst you're playing it. And that's what you want. That's how you get your audience participation, your audience interest, your audience engagement. And then sort of, you know, just to finish it off with a flourish, you take your your main idea that you started the whole piece off with and you go for it with harmony and counter melody and you just go absolutely nuts and you reharmonize it um hymn writers do this all the time because hymns are pretty much it's the same music the same melody the same chord changes for each verse and if you've got a hymn that's like six verses long you're playing the same piece of melody and the same piece of chord changes six times. Even if the lyrics are inspiring, that can get boring quite quickly. So what do you do? You reharmonize. You take the same melody, you put new chord changes underneath it. And that makes the melody come alive afresh, sound a little bit different. And so there's another approach that you can take. Um, to provide, you know, kind of theme, variation, contrast um, that's going to get your listener to really engage with your music. So I hope that that answers that really rather excellent question. Um, there are loads and loads and loads and loads of books that go into what I've just kind of sketched out for you uh, in just a couple of minutes in great detail. And, you know, they, they provide ex exemplars from Mozart, from Beethoven, from Bach, from uh, Palestrina, from all sorts of composers through the centuries, as well as, you know, modern day composers. Um, so another good thing to listen to is listen to other composers, composers that I've just mentioned, but also modern composers. Now, maybe not necessarily film composers because film music can be incredibly complicated and it it as well as inspiring 
it may actually end up turning you off getting started on your own little, you know, four chord melody. Um, so listen to TV theme tunes. TV theme tunes are designed to be very, very catchy. They are designed to hook you in very quickly and have your attention very, very quickly. So the melodies are very strident and the melodies are very clear, clear as a bell. You know exactly what the melody is and, you know, you know within five seconds of hearing it, even if you're in the kitchen making a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and you hear that theme tune, you know exactly what that TV show is. So TV themes for that very reason are are designed to have really, really strong and clear melodies. So they are a lesson in melody writing all on their own. And uh, you can sit down and you can try figuring them out on the on the piano. You know, uh, you know, find one of those shows that you like the melody of on YouTube and uh, Play it. Try and figure out what the melody is on the keyboard. Once you've done that, try writing it down. Even if you don't write notation, write down what the, the, the letters of the notes are. And then you can start to take that melody apart and go, what makes this melody work? What makes it sound good? And before you know it, you'll start to identify things that make it go. Like you go, aha, there's a little phrase here that goes up. There's a little phrase here that goes down that seems to kind of contrast the, the, the phrase that goes up. And then he repeats that. But then he does this other thing where he maybe goes from the, the major to the relative minor. And then he comes all the way back um, and repeats that first section over again. So, you know, th TV th theme tunes are a great example of real short form composition, which is why they are really, really great to start um, learning from because they are so short form because you have to get your ideas out to the audience very quickly. You've got maybe about 15 or 20 seconds tops for, um, you know, opening credits theme tune. And then closing credit theme tunes, you've got you've you've got maybe another, you know, another minute and ten seconds plus the twenty that you started with, um, with which to kind of expand your ideas a little bit more and give the the audience something to listen to that they didn't they didn't hear in the opening credits. Uh so you know uh economy really matters when it comes to writing music for TV themes. Uh, you've got to get your statement strong and out there very, very quickly, and therefore uh, economy matters a lot with TV theme composition. So I hope that that answers that question. That's a terrific question. It's a great way to start the show. Um, he says, not looking at going back to scratch, what books would you recommend if I've got a few years under your belt? If you've got a few years under your belt, then... Um, uh, oh, I have to think about this. Um, because I didn't really, you know, I went to university and I studied composition, but I, um, I didn't really dive into theory books or, um, you know, books that are like this thick. Why? Because books that are this thick don't teach me how to write music. They teach me how to dissect and take apart pieces of music and analyze them. They never really taught me how to actually go about composing. And this is where listening and trying to, you know, listening and playing by ear what you hear. So you're training your ear as much as you're doing anything else um, to really go for um, uh, trying to figure out what's going on and then trying to, uh, trying to identify thematic material. So the first thing you want to do is you want to you want to dive in and try and look at you know the first thematic idea and how that thematic idea has been developed. Um, like I said, there are plenty of books on it, um, and I really don't want to sit and ream, ream off a list of books because there are so many that are really really good. Um, but I'm just going to very quickly. There's one 
that I do want to recommend. I cannot completely remember the title of it, so I'm going to Google this one. Um, uh, and see if I can find it because it's years and years and years since I looked at this. Um, so let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. All right. I mean, this kind of depends upon what style of music you're composing in as well. As much as as much as anything else, um, what I'm going to link you to is going to depend upon. Um, oh, is my camera going out of focus? So it has. Hang on. Let me see if I can refresh that. Did that work? Hang on. Sometimes this works. No, that's made it worse. Hang on a minute. I hold my hand up sometimes that makes it focus come on focus come on camera focus okay I don't know why it's not focusing what the hell hang on a second folks Let's see if I can get this damn thing to focus Let's see if that has worked. There we go. Fixed. Sorted. Yeah, I don't know why the camera just suddenly decided I'm not going to focus anymore. <laughs> anyway, we should be back now. Um, all right, so I'm going to give you a nice little list here. Um... Uh, all right. Here we go. And I'm glad I found this resource again. Okay, so I've just posted a link there. Now, the reason why I said I'm glad that I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm glad I have um, rediscovered this link. Um, this is a link to a really, really good um, reading list. And the reason why I'm glad, I'm so glad I found this again, because it features two of my favorite books. One is um, Orchestration by Samuel Adler, which is great. And then the other one is 20th Century Harmony by Vincent Perchetti, um, which is great for basically learning how to break out from traditional harmony and break out into more complex harmony which um, I really enjoyed that. There's a bunch of other books on here that are really good as well. Um, Behind Bars, uh, sorry, Behind Bars by Elaine Gould is fantastic. And um, the reason why I recommend this book, it's The Definitive Guide to Music Notation. And the reason why this is really, really good is because this is basically the foundational um, book for the um, the rules um, and the guidelines that makes Notion work in particular. Um, I think Sibelius basically uses some of these principles as well, um, but it's great. Uh, the best resource on music notation, this is always on my desk when I'm preparing orchestral parts and scores. Many intricacies of music notation that every composer eventually runs into questions they cannot answer from experience. This book has the answers. Yes, Elaine Gould's book is fantastic. Um, for um, getting you um, a deep dive into notation and how that works. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of really, really good stuff here, like Renaissance style uh, modal counterpoint. So if you're wanting to learn all about that, then that's there. Analyzing classical form. So if you're wanting to learn about uh, form and structure, you know, the things like, like Rondo form that I talked about. Um, 
then this is an excellent book. Uh, and basically, it gives you a solid tool set, according to this brief here, solid tool set for understanding musical form, basis theory of, uh, of form of many ideas from Schoenberg's book, The Fundamentals of Music Composition, which, by the way, is excellent as well. If you can kind of get over kind of some of the language that, that he uses, and I'm not talking about foul language, I'm talking about just the way Schoenberg um, uh, basically phrases his ideas and concepts. Um, but yeah, Fundamentals of Music Composition by Arnold Schoenberg is a, is a fantastic book as well. Um, and Kaplan's book is based on that. So highly recommended if you are if you've been composing for a while and you've got a good few years of composing under your belt, then then that is an excellent read um, and will get you into um, looking at that. And I've mentioned Counterpoint and Partimento. So if you're wanting to write fugues or you're wanting to study fugues, then The Art of uh, Partimento by Sanguinetti is another really good book. Um, that is not a book I'm familiar with, though. Um, there is another book. I can't remember who it's by. It's another Italian author um, where he talks about fugue. Um, uh, and it's basically a study on the cantatas and fugues and toccatas and fugues of um, Johann Sebastian Bach, which is well worth getting into if that's kind of your bag. Voice Leading by Dave Huron is really good. Um, I used uh, basically some of what I was talking about at the piano here which was voice leading, essentially. Um, it comes out of ideas that you'll find in uh, David Hutton's book. Um, so there, there's a, a good few that you can get your teeth into there. So I recommend a good number of um, books off of that list. Uh, he says, brilliant, I'm trying to learn when to use certain chords arrangements. So whenever I sit down to write, I've got a good idea where to go. It depends. Again, it, I I can certainly help you with with things like harmony uh, and arranging because I mean that's my bag. I talk, you know, I I went to university and studied jazz composition, um, and I studied composition to um, uh, postgraduate level, and then of course I I taught composition. So. Um, Having studied uh, with um, some great com uh, some great jazz composers and big band composers, um, I then went and taught composition at high school and then at university level as well. So I'm pretty well rounded from an educational point of view, um, and as an educator as well. So I can I'm, you know and harmony is my passion, whether it's orchestral harmony or whether it's jazz harmony. Um, harmony is definitely my passion. I love harmony. I love I love the idea of uh, tritonal substitution, whether whether you use it in a classical context or in a jazz context or a pop music context. Um, tritonal substitutions are incredibly useful and helpful and a great way to bring a little bit of extra spice and color to your music. So chord changes, harmony, improvisation, and that kind of thing, That's that's kind of where I live, really. Um, yeah, so I don't know why my camera went a bit weird. That was weird. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I'm just going back up the chat to kind of see what the story is here. Um, Cal says, uh, his songs are mostly one, five, six, uh, uh, four, those venerable chord songs. Uh, yes. Yeah, one six four five or one six two five one is incredibly popular. You'll find a lot of songs that that do that. So a good place if you're in a pinch and you need to write something really really quickly, have your A section, your first section, basically doing one six two five one. Okay, and then. When you've repeated that, so do that twice, so go. And then go to B7, and then go 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. And 
and then repeat your first section. And I did a little tritonal, little tritonal substitution at the end there as well. So, and the, little, the point of the B7 there is that it's a 5 to 1 in E minor. And then that brings you back to C major again, really usefully. So um, I hope that that has been helpful. Uh, Chris says, it's fine, I'm drunk, and everything looks fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, from, from that point of view, my dress sense is actually really, really plain today. I'm just wearing um, a plain kind of blue T-shirt with this fleece over the top. Because it's cold here in Scotland, and it is very, very windy. So I'm aware that we may lose power and we may lose internet at any time. So... Um, I'm trying to kind of just keep the show moving as quickly as I can uh, before that happens, to be honest. Um, anybody else got any other questions? Um, and you are more than happy to ask questions about the Christmas songwriting challenge, for which there is a workspace in Studio One Plus, which Rich has created. Rich Cresswell's created that. And so... If you want to take part, if you're not already involved, if you would like to take part, then um, uh, I would recommend in the first instance that you reach out to Rich Cresswell. Um, connect with him and uh, you can then give him your email address that you use for your mypersonas.com account. If you don't have a my.personas.com account, um, because you're not a Studio One person, you use a different DAW, um, but you would still like to be involved, you you can create a my.personas.com account for free, and it doesn't cost you anything, and then once you've done that, um, you can give Rich your email address for that, that you've used for that account, and then he can add you, he can invite you to the workspace, and then you can accept that invitation, and you can be involved. And you can go and get all of the stuff there and then you can post up your your song and your mp3 and all of that fun stuff. So, um, there you go. Rich is just posted, connect with me here. And he says, I will add you to the challenge. Absolutely. So if you want to be involved and you're not involved already, then please do do that. And I just said do do. <laughs> Am I allowed to say doo-doo on Thanksgiving? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but... <laughs> um, uh, let's see. John Hawk says, I have an axe here with Fender on it. Is it any good? And does it work with Studio One? Axe? Do you mean guitar? Or are you talking about a literal axe that you use for chopping down trees or lopping off heads and arms and legs of you know, treasonable people in the 14th century. I'm not sure which you are referring to. Um, um, so please do clarify that, John, what you're referring to. Um, and then I can answer your question a wee bit more clearly. Uh, let's see. The Craft and Business of Songwriting by John Brainy. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, Bobby Booth says, I don't have Studio One Plus. That's fine. You don't have to have it. Um, if you have Studio One, and Bobby, I know you do, you have a my.personas.com account. Connect with Rich Cresswell, and he will add you to the workspace. That's all you need. You just need my.personas.com. Doesn't cost you a cent, doesn't cost you a dime. It costs you literally zero dollars uh, and you can take part in it. <clears throat> so you are good if you would like to take part, Bobby. And I would love for you to take part because we were so glad that you took part in um, the Halloween challenge. Um, as Kyle says, if you have a Personas login, you can be invited to Workspace. Yes, that's all you need. MyPersonas.com. Go there, create an account and you're in. Doesn't matter what door you use, whether you're using Pro Tools, Cubase, Nuendo, Ableton Live, 
Mixcraft, whatever you're using. Uh, even if you're using iron filings on tin, even if you're using wax cylinders, even if you're using reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape machines, um, it's okay. Even if you don't actually use a DAW, maybe you record direct to a cassette machine or you record to reel-to-reel -reel tape or you record to a hard disk recorder and that's how you do your music. That's fine. All you need is the internet and my.personas.com account you are good to go because you can you can print your mix however you know whether that's from tape machine you can you you know there are various ways you can render that down to mp3 or wav file and then you can upload that to the workspace and you can be involved so um there are pretty much no restrictions i will um um i will i will tell you that right now and Chris Mrakner has been added, which is cool. That is awesome. So, yes, the more the merrier. The more people we have involved in it, the better. So, Elusive1970, if you're still here and you you don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you are a Studio One user, even easier for you to be involved. Um, if you are a member of Studio One Plus, even easier for you to be involved. If you're using a different door, it's fine. You can still be involved. You just need to go to my.personas.com, create an account, and log into it and uh, connect with Rich. Tell him your email address that you used to create that account, and then he'll invite you to the workspace. If you're a member of Studio One Plus already, it's just dead easy. Um, just let Rich know what your account email address is, and he will add you straight away. If you're a Studio One user, same deal. There is no um, discrimination here um, between whether you're using Studio One or not, or or Studio One Plus or not. It's all good. Everybody can take part in this, even though we are using the workspace provided by Studio One Plus. You are still good to take part. Camera's going out of focus again. Yeah, I, I don't know why that is. Hang on. See if I can do something about that. Maybe a little bit more light. Maybe that's what the problem is. There we go. And we're back in good sharp focus again. Yeah, I think maybe my lights were just not bright enough. But I have fixed that now, so we're good. We've got nine minutes left, folks. So if there are no more questions, then I guess we could end the show right now. And uh, we could, you know, um, if Billy wants to start an after show, we can do that now. And uh, we can move over to there and I can, you know, have another cup of tea and we're, we're all good. Uh, or we can just kind of sit here and, and I can just say inane stuff for the next nine minutes. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to be involved in this Christmas challenge, there is a closing date. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what that is. So the closing date is going to be Sunday, December 17th. All right. That Sunday, December 17th is the closing date. So you need to have your entries in by the end of the Sunday night live show on December 17th. Then on the Wednesday, the 20th of December, which is the following Wednesday, which is our Songwriting Simplified show, Rich and I will be will be live together on the show and we will play our favorite um, entries like we did for the Halloween challenge. Uh, and we'll also announce the winner. So uh, and there are there are things up for grabs. I don't know what those things are. But there are things up for grabs. Also, a little bit sooner than that uh, is this Friday. I know it's kind of slap dang in the middle of Thanksgiving and all of that. But this Friday at 8 p.m. UK time, uh, there is a Studio One meetup that I am hosting. So... Uh, Keep an eye out for that. It's the UK meetup. And if you are 
uh, if you go on the Personas uh, website, personas.com, uh, I can show you where this is, just in case you're not sure where to find details. Uh, hang on just a second. I can show you this on screen. Okay, here we go. And there's me at the bottom. So, uh, yes, uh, as you just saw here, if I go back to that first slide, Black Friday deals are ongoing. There's a whole bunch of Personas gear you can get for super duper ridiculous cheap, including discounts on Studio One and uh, cross grades from other doors to Studio One as well. Uh, so go and check that out if you're if you're kind of considering possibly switching to Studio One, and I think you should. I switched from 30 years of using Cubase uh, 10 years ago to, to starting to use Studio One, and I've never looked back. So if you want to find out more about the Studio One meetups, go to Learn here and then click on Studio One meetups. And you will find here is the UK meetup right here, and I'm going to click on that. And there is details there, and you'll find there's the the uh, the link to the Fender Zoom, and the passcode is S1 Meetup. So I'm going to pop this in the chat as well. Uh, Billy's already Billy's already beat me to it, but you know it comes from the horse's mouth as well. Uh, that would be uh, eight uh, seven six five four three two. Yes, two p.m. That will be 2 p.m. Central Time. So if you're having a wee, if you've had uh, like lunch already, then you can have like a wee after lunch. Um, bring your bring your beers. You know, if you if you're drinking beers on Thanksgiving, I've got some beers as well. Bring your beers. Bring your bottle of wine. Bring your champagne. Bring whatever it is you're drinking, and come join us, and we'll talk about Studio One and um, making music and all of that. Um, and of course, songwriting, composing, and how we use Studio One, and maybe even what we would like to see in the future of Studio One. So future features, those kind of things, what I've, whatever ideas you've got for the future, um, we can talk about all of those on Friday as well. So um, there we go, let's go back over here. So, folks, uh, I think we will end it here, to be honest. Uh, Bobby says, for some reason, I don't see Billy's comments on here. I, well, I do see them. Um, I definitely do see them. Um, if you are not seeing either Billy's or Kyle's or Rich's comments, you can click on the three dots at the top of the chat. And you might see that there might be a button called moderation at moderation activity. If you click on that, then maybe you'll see them. I don't know. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you should. You should actually see them. Keith Salisbury is here. He says, thanks again. Keith, I'm glad you're here, buddy. Um, I didn't see you come in the door. And I'm very sorry that I didn't see you come in the door. Sorry about that, mate. Um, but that's us done and dusted. So, um, Billy, if you want to uh, launch a Zoom, which you have, there you go, Zoom, everyone welcome, then uh, we will all hop over there. If you would like to join us, I'll be there. Billy will be there. Hopefully some of you will be there as well. And uh, we can just chill, hang out. And, uh, you know, we can start Thanksgiving early if you like. All right, folks, um, on that note, I will bid you all a very good night, and to all my uh, good friends over in the United States, I wish you all a fantastic Thanksgiving. Have a lot of fun. Stay safe. Don't eat too much. Don't eat drink too much either. And I'll see you all back on uh, Sunday for Sunday Night Live, if you're about. And also for the meetup on Friday, again, if you're about. And then after that, we'll have... Um, uh, after that, we'll have uh, songwriting simplified. We'll be back around to where we are now. Okay, take care, everybody. See you then. Good night. <laughs>